Greetings, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the 53rd Annual Mid-Year Assembly of the Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in this day. We're not going to miss out on this opportunity to give our God praise in the midst of this perilous times and this pandemic panic. We're still going to give God the praise. The Bible tells us in Psalms 107 and verse number 20 that he sent his word to heal them and to deliver them from their destructions. So we're not going to miss out on this opportunity to give God praise. And we thank you for joining us for our 53rd annual mid-year session. Let us go into the sanctuary. Be blessed. together while you're at home or wherever you are we can rest on the promise that knowing that Jesus promised that he'll take care of me so simply says oh how wonderful it is Jesus promised he'll take care of me mm, oh how marvelous it is
Hello, Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly. Oh, it's an honor. I give honor to God, our Father, His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I honor our presiding bishop, Dr. Robert D. Hood, Vice Bishop Rodney Parker, to my husband, Deacon Stevens, and to all of you. I am honored and I am so thrilled to have this opportunity to uh, speak to you tonight, this first night of our grand mid-year assembly. I was looking forward to uh, this and to see how the Lord was going to lead our bishop in doing this, not knowing, not even thinking about that he would even consider putting me on this program. But nevertheless, we know that we are in a time of change and we've got to be able to change and I thank God that uh, that the Lord has not forgotten us that we are still in his care amen and how many of you know that uh, things may be different but it's still all right it's okay we believe and we are assured that our father is still in charge amen and we, be, we know that on that note, the assembly's uh, theme is one church and one vision out of the book of Ephesians. I, I could have gone there, but the Holy Spirit led me another way. Amen. And we pray that it'll be all right with you on tonight. I, 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 uh, I always ask the Lord what he would have me to say to his people, because, you know, you are God's people and he knows what we need. So the thought came to me to tell them the church still stands. The church still stands. I asked and I asked and I asked again. And every time I went back to the Lord, it came out to the, the same thing. Tell them the church still stands. And that lets me know that somebody needs to know that the church has not lost its power. The church is still alive. Amen? I thank God. So tonight we're going to be coming out of Matthew 16th chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the 13th verse. Amen? Out of the Gospel of Matthew. And Matthew records it like this. When Jesus came into the coast of Syria, Philippiah, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said unto him, Blessed are thy Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And the 18th verse reads, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Pray along with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we ask you to bless this word, that it bring a revelation to somebody's spirit, to uplift them and help them to go on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In this passage, Jesus was in deep conversation with his disciples. He wanted to ask, he asked them, whom did men say that he was? Well, the disciples decided to answer him, and they said, well, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Good answer, John the Baptist, but not the right answer. John was good. John was a forerunner of Christ. John came out of the wilderness preaching the, about Jesus. He was, he was making the way for Jesus. He did a lot of good things, but John was not the Christ. Amen. And then he said, uh, some say Elijah. Well, Elijah was a good man. That was a good answer too. But it was not the right answer because Elijah was not Jesus. Elijah did a lot of miraculous things. You know, the Lord used him in, in a great way. Amen. But he was not the Christ. And others said Jeremiah. Well, Jeremiah was good. Jeremiah was, good. was a good answer, but not the right answer. 
Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. Jeremiah, you know, was a good spokesman for the Lord, but Jeremiah was not the Christ. And so they said, well, if it's not he and one of them, then maybe he's one of the other prophets. Amen. And Jesus uh, wanted to go a little deeper with them. And so he said, but whom say ye that I am? And you know, on today, you need to know who Jesus is. Amen. He's not a figment of our imagination. He's not a fairy tale. He is the son of God. And so Simon Peter stepped up. Amen. Bold Simon Peter stepped up to the plate and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, this excited Jesus because Jesus said, Blessed are thou, Simon Bajona, because flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And this is true because only the Father knows the Son. And only the son knows the father. So he knew that Peter didn't get this from the people that he was waking around with. Peter didn't get this because he was hanging around the church. Peter got this because God himself revealed it to him that this was his son. God is all right on tonight. And he said unto thee, and this is what uh, really caught my attention. This is this really uh, 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 spoke in my spirit. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Amen? The church still stands. He declared unto Peter that he was going to build his church. Not John the Baptist, not Elijah, not Jeremiah, not any of the other prophets, not even Mark, Luke, and John, not even Paul, and all of them are good people, hallelujah, but they were not Jesus. Amen? So none of them, hallelujah, could do what he went on to tell him. I will build my church. And, he put an and in there. You know, and is conjunction. It joins the two phrases together. So something else was coming, okay? On this truth, he was going to tell them that he's building his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The gates of hell cannot tear down the church of Christ. The, the crisis that we are going through now cannot tear up the church. The church, hallelujah, is here to stay. Jesus, all of the other uh, prophets, they were good prophets. They were good men. They did good work, but they were not the son of God. Jesus was the only one who embodied all that God was. Jesus continued after having this conversation with uh, his disciples. He continued to go on to build the church. Amen. And I thank God that he did it because had man built the church, it would have been torn down. If man, because man uh, is divided, but God is united. God is one God. He is united. Hallelujah. People will, will be div divisive and they will not come together to be about our father's business. But God is a one God and he wants us to be one. The Godhead consists of three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. If the Father says something, the Word agrees and the Holy Ghost performs it. Isn't God all right? They are one and they bear witness in heaven according to 1 John 5 and 7. And then he says, there are three that bears witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three are in agreement and they all say the same testimony. What do they say? They say that Jesus is the son of the living God. They say that Jesus is God in the flesh. They say that Jesus is Mary's little baby boy. They say that Jesus is the light of the world. They say that Jesus is the rock of our salvation. Can anybody say amen? 
Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. All of them agree into one. Nobody is divided. Nobody says that Jesus thinks he's more than God. Everybody knows that he is God in the flesh. Amen? The Bible gives evidence that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal life. Not you're going to get it. Honey, you already got it. When you get Jesus, you got eternal life. I feel like having church on tonight. Amen. God himself bore witness to this fact at the baptism that John the Baptist performed, saying from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. God himself even spoke at that time to let them know this is Jesus. This is he that they spoke of that was coming. This is our salvation. It's right here in, the, in front of you. Jesus continued on to build his church and he preached, he taught, he healed, he delivered, he set the captive free, he gave sight to the blind, he let the lame man walk, hallelujah, he gave uh, uh, it, the deaf ears became open until finally he had to go to the cross and shed his blood for his church. Amen. No one else shed his blood for the church but Jesus Christ. You see, my friends, the church of Christ is not wood, it's not stones, it's not bricks. Right now, we can't come together in a place, amen, to have service. But you know what? You can have church right where you are because the church is on the inside out of you. The church is supernatural. The church is not a playhouse. The church is Jesus. This is why Jesus was misunderstood. They thought his kingdom was of this world. And he kept telling them it was not. He would, his kingdom was not of this world. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Man's eyes are on this earthly building. Man works on the outside, but God works on the inside. Honey, these, these, these rocks and these the bricks and the wood, they cannot worship God. But you who have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you can cry out and talk to our master. His name is Jesus and he is the church. He's the one who founded the church of Christ. Every disciple of Christ ought to be on their feet giving God praise for what he has done. Because without Jesus, we can't make it. Without him, there would be no church. But Jesus went to the cross and died and shed his blood. And because of his blood, because of his blood, we have a New Testament. We have a church it's founded on Jesus. Can't no rock, can't no, no dynamite tear it up, can't no, no missiles blow it up, can't nobody do nothing about it because it's founded upon a rock. That rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he's awesome with me on tonight. Maybe they thought, and then Jesus was walking with his disciples, and they had come upon the temple. And amen, I guess back then they had beautiful temples. You know, somebody, some people got really beautiful churches today, and they worship the church building. But they told Jesus, said, Master, look at these buildings. He wanted them to come and look, take a look at this. I guess they thought they were going to impress him because of what man's hand has done. But how many know that? can't nobody do like Jesus did. I don't care how beautiful it is. Can't nobody do it like the Lord. Instead, Jesus warns them. He doesn't, he doesn't tell them how beautiful the place is. He doesn't tell them how much we ought to uh, uh, look up to the architect. But he tells them that not one stone, there's going to come a time when not one stone shall be left upon another stone. The building can be destroyed. Amen. This earthly building can be destroyed, but Jesus does not live in the bricks. Jesus lives within his people. Amen. We are the church. Hallelujah. He
this church lives on and it cannot be destroyed. Amen. We cannot come into the house of prayer together at this hour, but we can still come together in the church. The world has been trying to destroy the church even before the church came into existence. Amen. Uh, but they did not succeed. They tried to kill him when he was born. They tried, Herod tried to have him killed when he was born before he could even fulfill what he came to do, but they couldn't kill him. Amen. They tried to, uh, as they walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem, they wanted to kill him, but they could not come near him. Hallelujah. When God got his hands on something, you might as well sit back and let it go. They couldn't even kill him when they crucified him. How do I know this? Because it's recorded in the word of God that on the third day morning after they crucified him, that Jesus got up and walked through the city. Jesus, our Lord and your Savior, the one who had shed his blood for the church, was not dead. Amen. They could not kill him. Amen. It is recorded in your word. You got to read your word. The church stands taller than any power, amen, any mountain. It is stronger than any storm or dynamite. It is, on, it is the only safe haven that we have. It cannot not be destroyed. Amen. So why, uh, why don't we run to the church? Why don't we run to who Jesus is? Amen. God is our father and Jesus' son is our savior and his spirit upholds the word. The Bible tells us that he is returning to get his church, that everyone who has given their lives to him, amen, God is coming back to pick us up. All believers in Christ will reign with Jesus in heaven. What should we be doing in a time like this? Well, honey, let me tell you what you ought to be doing. Some of us are sitting at home and working. Well, you need to be getting your house in order. You need to clean out every corner of your house. Amen. You need to sweep from under the rug. And I'm not talking about the natural house. I'm talking about the tis temple, the one that we are living in. Amen. This is the one that we need to be working out. Amen. You need to get out all of that enviness, all of that jealousness, all of that backbiting, all of that. I can't stand this one. I can't stand that one. You can't come and be with this one. Amen. Because you don't like what they're doing. Well, it's time now that you need to clean it up. Amen. Because I tell you, I believe that Jesus is soon to come. The book of Zephaniah says it is best in the second, in the second chapter and verse Verse 3, it says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have worked his judgment. What do you need to seek? Seek righteousness. The Lord spoke to me earlier in the year, and he said, Don't do what's good, but do what's right. If you do what's right, it will be good. Amen? So seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be that, that ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. And you know, that reminded me of when uh, Moses and them were going through, and God was sending the plagues on the children of uh, Israel. Amen? And when the deaf angel was coming through, and then he was taking the firstborn of all the Egyptians, the unbelievers. Amen? that the children of God had the blood on their posts. And tell me when the deaf angel was coming through the city, amen, that when it got to the house of a child of God, Lord have mercy, that the deaf angel did not enter into their house. So I'm telling you today, my brothers and my sisters, the church still stands. And that is our refuge today. If you want to be safe, you got to be in the church. Amen. God God blesses the church. It is his word. The Holy Spirit keeps it standing. Amen. You see, the church is made up of those people who have been born again. You that believe in Christ, you that have him on the inside. Amen. This is what the church of Christ is made up of. Jesus is coming back for people who look like him. 
people who talk like him, people who walk like him, people who believe like what he told them to do. And you're doing what the Father has told us to do. Beloved, in a time that we are living in today, it's time for us to stop playing church. It's time for us to be real and be about our Father's business. The church still stands. You might can't get in a building, but you certainly can get in Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, whoever you are, no matter what it is that you're going through, amen, the church is your haven. Your church is where we ought to lay our heads, amen. That's the message that God has given me on today, amen. And I thank God for it. The church still stands. You can't depend on anything else, but you can depend on the word of God. It never changes. It is uh, uh, alive, it is right, and it's just, and it's, it's holy. It's everything that we need is in the word of God. We thank God for the word, and if there's anyone who has heard the word and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, why don't you take this opportunity time while you don't have to be ashamed of somebody looking at you, but you can just look up to heaven and you can talk to our Father and he will, amen, bless you and receive you unto himself. He told us he was going away, but he was coming back to receive us unto himself. Beloved, we can't change the will of God. Death is going to be. It's, it's a once appointed to man to, to live, and after that we've got to die. We've got to face the judgment. So let us face our God with Jesus on the inside. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus who founded the church. Thank you for continuing to stand in this last day. Help us, Holy Spirit, to witness to those who do not know you and need to enter in before it is too late. Please, Lord, have mercy on them. Let the church turn on the lights that those covered in anger, sin, and delusions be set free. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. Bless this mid-year assembly to be all that you want it to be. Keep us under your shadow until we hear you say, well done, thy good and thy faithful service. Be encouraged. It is in Jesus' name we say, amen. Remember, the church still stands. God bless. You gave me my hands to reach out to man. To show them your love and your perfect plan. You gave me my ears. I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cry of sinners, but cannot watch.
Friends, if this message tonight has been a blessing to you, we ask that you would consider sowing a love gift to the assembly to help us and to assist us to continue to do ministry, not just locally, but do ministry worldwide. If you will, give in our cash app, dollar sign, GRDA 2018. That is dollar sign, GRDA 2018. Give and the Lord will give back unto you. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do.